All right, today we're going to be uh, using Fiji, aka ImageJ, to go ahead and analyze some lung slice images to try to measure the uh, area of the airway lumen. And the first thing we're going to want to make sure we do is go to uh, Fiji.sc and go ahead and download Fiji. Like it says, uh, Fiji is a image processing package. It's basically uh, ImageJ, but with a couple extra features added in. So go ahead and download that for your computer. And we'll go ahead and just open ImageJ, AKA Fiji. Now, Fiji does take a little bit of time to go ahead and load. That's because it does have those extra features kind of automatically in it. So we'll just wait here a second while it loads. All right, so when it loads, you can have this remind you later. You get this little bar, just kind of place it right up here in the upper right hand corner. And what we're going to do is first, uh, we're going to load our lung slice images. So we're going to go to File, Import, Image Sequence, and just click on the first image that you have in your folder. And click Open. Now, it's going to automatically select all the images in the folder. So there are 211 images that we have. And uh, start at the first image and then go up by one every time. So maybe if you want to do every other image or every third image, you could change this. Or if you want to only do like the second half, you could start at image 100 or whatever. Um, so go ahead and change this to what you need and leave the rest of these the same. Then click OK. So 200 is about the maximum number of images I would probably do at any one time. I um, mean, while you're just starting off or practicing, you might want to start with maybe doing 30 images at a time. Sometimes you need to um, go back and you need to start over because you messed something up during the analysis. Uh, and while you're learning, that might happen more often, so you might want to do it with only 30 images so that this loading process is faster and you're getting more uh, chances to analyze and practice. Uh, this is also a good time to go ahead and check this number 211. Make sure that's the right number of images that you wanted to load, which it is in this case, but if you were trying to skip every other one or you're starting at maybe halfway through, maybe this image number would be different. You can check that here. Uh, you can also look at the number of images up here and then down here you can see that you can scroll through the images. So this is our image sequence. You can watch the airway contract up here at the beginning. And you'll see that while they were taking the images, some of these are lighter, and then it gets dark, and then it gets lighter again. That is not ideal, but it's kind of the same down here. Yeah, it gets darker here too. As you do not want that to happen. That'll cause a couple problems later, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, so the first thing I kind of like to do at the beginning is go ahead to process uh, enhanced contrast. You can uh, play with this number up here, um, but you want to process all 210 slides. And hopefully you can make the darkers darker and the brighters brighter. And sometimes that helps. And then you want to go to image, look at tables, select high low. What this is going to do is kind of find the brightest areas and it's going to color them red and the darkest areas and color them blue. What we want to do is create a nice strong blue border around the outside. And we're going to be able to do that going to image, adjust, brightness contrast. So we're going to go ahead and increase our minimum here. And as you can see, the darker colors down here where this line is are becoming blue. Anything lower than that is blue. And we're creating a stronger border around the outside. And then I like to bring the ma maximum down all the way to there also. And that takes the lightest colors, anything above this line, and turns them automatically red. And I like to bring them right up close to next to each other. All right, and so we've kind we want to make sure that the blue border here goes all the way around the airway, and we'll go ahead and scroll so it looks good so far. So this isn't ideal. Um, this isn't maybe strong enough. Bring it up just a bit. Um, 
this these are some of the darker images so it's sometimes impossible because we're trying to make this as efficient as possible to get all 100 percent of the pictures what the important thing is to make sure that it works for a majority of the pictures so these guys aren't going to work but for the most part it looks like the border is pretty strong around the outside just one just want to check one thing make sure that we're good up here Uh, go ahead. These look fine, so we'll go ahead and apply. Do you want to apply it to all 210 slices? Yes. Okay, so we got blue and red, but we want to make sure make it black and white. So we're going to go to process binary, make binary. Uh, you can go ahead and keep all these settings. Um, so that's going to turn the blue into white and the red into black. And here we go, boom, black and white images. So for the most part, the lumens looking pretty good. Well, the thing I want to do now is go to analyze. So let's go. You can do this at the beginning or now. Um, you just need to do this before you go to the next step. And that you want to click to remove scale. That's going to change the unit of length to pixels and make global so it applies to all the images. So you got no scale. Then we want to go to analyze particles. And I've done these a couple times. Uh, in the past, so I know that 100,000 is kind of where you want the rough uh, lower limit on these. And then I like to put the circularity between uh, 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. And that just makes sure it looks for circular objects. And then I want to make sure we show the masks and that it displays results and clear results is fine. We're going to go ahead and press uh, OK process all, all the images and then you can see it starts measuring the areas of different objects that it's finding uh, particles if you will and then it's recording the areas here in units of pixels okay so these are the masks so this is these are the particles that the uh, analyzed particles function found now right off the bat you can see that uh, this isn't an airway so that's not super good. We don't really want these. We don't really care what the area of these are. And if you look up here, we know we have 210 images, but it, we've measured 227 objects. So we have more measurements than we have uh, pictures. So we're definitely measuring things like this, things that we're not supposed to be measuring. So we've got that actually quite a bit. And then we don't have the airways here. And then we've got a funky airway here. And this guy. And then kind of scroll through and make sure it's generally finding the right things. Kind of missed a couple there. All right. So one thing, we've got a lot of like white specks in the middle of these. And then there's this guy too, and white dots and stuff. We can go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's close these masks and these, get rid of these measurements. Go ahead and uh, go to process binary fill holes yes let's go ahead and do this so there's no way to undo this so if you do the fill holes or do some of these other things and mess up then you have to go ahead and start over again which is why practicing with less images is sometimes better so we filled the holes so we got rid of a lot of the blank space in the middle of these um, and made this picture a little better and some of these other ones too I'm just kind of checking to make sure that it didn't mess anything up too badly Okay, and now because uh, it's been selecting this, uh, one thing we're going to try is to analyze particles, but maybe let's look for things that are more circular. So let's go to 0 0.1, increase the circularity constraints. So let's look for things that are circular. This isn't very circular. This is somewhat more circular. Just go ahead and click OK and analyze them all again. Okay, we got 210 here and 232. So I think we got somehow got more objects, but 
We can get that thing there. Okay. So we're still getting quite a bit of uh, that guy up there. All right. Here's one more thing we can do to try to prevent that. We can go to the freehand selection tool and just maybe go to one where it's contracted. We're just going to draw uh, kind of a wide area around here. The most important part is that we draw around the lumen here and we don't include this part. We're going to go ahead and analyze, analyze particles, get the same parameters. Yes. So now what it's doing is just looking inside the area we selected instead of the whole thing. So it's actually going to go a little faster. Okay, now instead of 237 objects, we have 199 measurements that they made. So um, this is the first time we've actually had less measurements than we do slices, which is probably good. And as you can see, we don't have any uh, feature up in the upper left-hand corner there. If you uh, do have features like that that you don't want, um, as long as it's only on a couple things, sometimes you can go through and just uh, delete those measurements out um, instead of having to draw circles. Sometimes the lumen might move around and that prevents you from doing the freehand selection. Uh, but you kind of have to take that at a case by case basis. So this is actually pretty good. So what we've got, you know, we're missing 11 values, but what we're going to do is we're going to control A or drag and select all these values and we're going to copy them to the clipboard. And we're going to open up our Excel and we can paste those in there and we can get the, rid of these three columns. Those are just the colors, but since it's black and white, it's, they're all going to be maxed out. And then we're going to kind of go through these. So we're missing 11 values still. We're going to scroll through the pictures. I think 10 we're missing. Okay. 10 and 11 and 12. 10, 11, 12. These three pictures. We're going to go ahead and insert. Push ourselves down. Okay. Then we can do a couple things here. We could just take the average of these. Uh, we could drag and maybe, maybe do something like that. What I like to do though is sometimes is just drag them, fill in those spots, and then maybe turn them red so we know later that those are filled in spots. And 13, kind of, you know, it's really small it's got this thing maybe we want to me double check that measurement by hand um, but then we have 14 15 those are gone uh, shift cells down drag this down drag this up color those red and then we've got 17 it's gone as well We've got 20, 21. Shift those down again. Drag those in. These are all pretty good. You'll see that the the borders change a little. There is a little error. It's not going to be perfect. We've got 109. And then we've got 11.
yeah, filling them in it probably isn't the best uh, if you're trying to do a really quantitative analysis on all these things, but if you're trying to look at the shape and what sort of features there are, um, then it, it's probably good enough. And then let's go ahead and drop these down. And look, we've got 210, which matches the number of pictures up here. So we did a good job of filling everything in. Let's go ahead and drag all this. Let's hit it. So that is kind of what our data looks like. See so maybe a steep contraction and then a small relaxation and then a secondary contraction uh, followed by relaxation kind of flat lines there you kind of see a little bit of air going up and down but it's really, really not too bad we can also pull up these are the hand measured values So just we can go ahead and add a new chart on. We can see the hand measured values are basically the same. Let's go ahead and get the axis zoomed in a bit. Uh, but we've got a little less error here. Um, but the general shape is almost identical. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, so that's basically the best way to do it. There are two kind of bottlenecks when you're doing this. The first is when you go to process, um, adjust and change the brightness to pick where your blue and your red levels are going to be. That can be kind of tricky. Like I said, that's a little more art than science sometimes. And the other one is um, when you're doing the analyzed particles and trying to choose these values, um, you can mess with the minimum to try to exclude other objects of different sizes um, and the circularity to try to pick the more circular lumens if your uh, airway is actually pretty circular. Um, other things you can do, you can use the wand tracing tool sometimes to uh, select your airway and then you can do control M and that'll automatically measure that so sometimes that's handy um, you can also obviously use freehand selection to draw a border around and then do control M and that'll give you another uh, value as well And then sometimes uh, if it's gonna, if it's a little uh, blurry, uh, the initial pictures are a little blurry, I like to go ahead and sharpen them to try to get those edges a little sharper. It doesn't always work, but it sometimes helps. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, 